alaikum Today we will be focusing on perfecting our recitation of Suratul Fatiha. Right? Sounds very basic, perhaps, to some of you, very elementary, right? Because we recite Suratul Fatiha 17 times a day at the bare minimum. If we're not praying sunnahs, if we're praying sunnahs, it's even more than that, right? And so many of us, we say to ourselves, I know Fatiha, right? I don't, I don't need to work on Fatiha. And that is precisely one of the reasons why I created this workshop. <laughs> because since we know Surah Fatiha so well from a memorization standpoint, we tend to conflate that with uh, it's like the proper recitation of Fatiha. But properly reciting something and having it memorized very well are not the same. They're two different things. So I can have a surah memorized very well. I can say it, boom, straight through, no problems, no hiccups, no nothing. But at the same time, it's very, very possible that I'm just making mistakes left and right, left and right, all over the place. This is very possible. That's because memorization and the science of tajweed are two different things. However, they are essentially like two wings on the same bird, two sides of the same coin, however you want to term it. Because they both contribute to the preservation of the Qur'an. Believe it or not, even if you don't become a hafiz of Qur'an, even if you don't memorize the entire Qur'an, you can still contribute to the preservation of the Qur'an by studying and mastering tajweed. The whole reason why the science, why it even became like a, a, a whole like codified science, as we know it today with all its names and its titles and all this stuff that, you know, idgham and idhar and qalqala and this and that. The reason why they made it, it's like systematized it and made it into like an entire science in, in the way that we know it today was because there was a point in time in history where you guys know after, you know, the death of the Prophet Sallallahu right, Islam started to spread like wildfire, right, during the Khilafah of Umar and Abu Bakr and so on and so forth, right? And so when that happened, much of this Islam is spreading outside of the Arabian Peninsula. So what happens? People can't, you know, actually, pe pe people are not as familiar with the Arabic language. So they're learning the Qur'an, but they have bad pronunciation because they don't have ayn, they don't have blood, they don't have this or that. Whatever these letters in the Arabic alphabet, they're not having, they, they, they didn't have this before. They never heard this before. But now all of a sudden this Qur'an is coming in this, right? And all this stuff. And they're like, whoa, this is different. And so they, don't, they didn't have a good grasp. So what was happening? People were memorizing Qur'an with the improper recitation with the improper pronunciation. And so scholars, they saw that if this continues on this route, what they were saying, if this continues down this path, what's going to happen is we're going to lose our Qur'an. They said, we're going to lose our Qur'an. If we don't get a grip on this issue, we're going to lose our Qur'an, and our Qur'an will become like the scriptures before it. We will lose it, right? So they weren't saying, oh my God, if we don't get a lot of people to memorize the Qur'an, we're going to lose our Qur'an. We had the memorization now. A lot of people memorized it. It wasn't an issue. They said, if we don't get this pronunciation down, we will lose our Qur'an. So this is proof. So the whole, that's the whole reason why it became the science in the way that it is today. That being said, obviously Tajweed existed during the time of the Prophet wasallam, for sure. But in practice only, just like... All the other things. They had aqidah, they learned aqidah, but they didn't call it aqidah. Right? They had fiqh, right? They had Islamic law, of course. That's where it was established. It was it's during the time of the Prophet, they didn't call it fiqh. Right? They didn't have madhahib at the time. They weren't obviously Shafi'i, Maliki, Hanafi, all this stuff, right? But these things developed later, right? Because we needed to kind of codify these things to make it more sort of, you know, accessible and palatable and this and that and so on, understandable and so on um, to people. Uh, and so, same with, uh, with Tajweed. And so, uh, back to Al-Fatiha, because we tend to have so much confidence, right, in our memorization of Al-Fatiha, it's one of those surah, it's the main surah that flies under the radar. Right? Because most of us in here, probably everyone in here, memorized Al-Fatiha through listening 
Or if not listening, if you read it, more than likely you read transliteration, but not the not the not memorizing it from the Arabic itself. I don't know anybody who memorized Fatiha from reading the Arabic. Like they didn't have it memorized, and then they they knew how to read Arabic, and they read the Arabic, and they memorized Fatiha from the Arabic. Right? No. So what's wrong with that? Huh? What's wrong with that? The problem is, is that I'll, I'll give you an example. So one guy, he's mispronouncing he because he learned it from hearing, but he heard it from someone who wasn't reciting it properly who probably learned it from someone who wasn't reciting it properly, who probably learned it from someone who wasn't reciting it properly. You catch my drift, right? And so what happened was, he was saying, and this was in Arab, he was saying, <laughs> with a sin in sirat. And I told him, no, no, it's not sin, it's sod. He said, really? He's Arab. He said, really? It's sod? I said, yeah. I said, look at the mushaf. That's why I have these screens up here, so we can look at it, right? And he looked and he said, he said, it is sad. He said, I thought this was seen my whole entire life. He was like in his 20s. He said, I thought, he said, Sirata, I thought Sirata was seen my whole entire life. He's Arab, right? And so, it's not the same. Oh, no, no. Well, that's why, that's why Tajweed is important to learn so that we can learn the distinction because what happens is for those who do, whether they're non-Arab or Arab, for those who do know the difference and they can hear the difference, when you say something else, something else registers. This is one of the reasons why the person with the best tajweed is, you know, obviously assuming they know the basics of the fiqh of prayer and all these things, is usually the one who is pushed up to lead because bad tajweed, improper pronunciation, can be a very big distraction in the prayer for those who are aware. For those who understand and are aware, do we always know who behind us knows or understands? Not always, right, when we're leading the prayer. Uh, and so it's really important to make sure we're pronouncing properly because if you're messing things up and somebody's back, they understand and they're like, what is this guy saying? Khushua, done. I'm not focusing on my prayer anymore, right? No, you're focusing on God, right? You're focusing on it's, on the too much. Ideally, ideally, however... You, you would think, you would want that, you would think so, but we can't speak for other people, right? Am I right? Can I speak for someone else and say, I know I'm jacking up the tejweed, but I mean, yeah, you're connected to God, right? It's all about God, right? Yeah, right? You're good, right? You're good. I can't do that. I mean, ideally, that would be the case. However, every situation is not ideal. Not even all of our prayer. Every time I pray, it's not the same. I might have khushur and fajr. And I might be distracted in Dhuhr. And then have Khushu' and Asr. And then I'm distracted at Maghrib. And then I'm distracted at Isha. And then I'm distracted at Fajr the next day. And then I have Khushu' at Dhuhr. You see what I'm saying? So even all of, even our individual daily prayers from day to day change in the level of focus that we have. But I can tell you one thing for sure. If we tighten up our tajweed, it's Definitely proven to increase your khushur and your focus in the prayer because I've put all my focus in the words of Allah, in the prayer, right? I've, and without me saying this, a student that attended a Fatiha workshop, they told me, uh, a few, a few have said, you know, after the workshop, subhanAllah, like my focus in prayer is like shot up. I didn't, and I didn't even mention it in the workshop. They just came to me and said that, subhanAllah. And so... And, and it makes sense. I mean, I wasn't surprised. I mean, I was surprised at the moment that they said it. But then when I thought about it, I was like, oh, that makes sense. Because you're, you're, they were focused on their Fatiha, like, very, very closely. So, alhamdulillah. Keep it, keep it, keep it coming, inshallah. <laughs> I know, I don't know. Oh, bismillah. All right. So, uh, just wanted to be um, clear about the distinction between, you know, how well we have something memorized versus... Uh, how properly we recite it. And Fatiha is, like I said, it's one of the ones that go under the radar because of our level, our level of confidence uh, in, in our memorization of it. So, um, what is the purpose of the workshop? The purpose of the workshop, number one, definitely tighten up our recitation of Surah Al-Fatiha. Why? Some scholars have said, uh, and this is a very mainstream, this is not a fringe opinion, very mainstream opinion, um, that if we do not properly recite the Fatiha in our prayer, it renders our prayer invalid. Talking about fiqh. 
You have access, mashallah, many scholars here. I wouldn't say something, especially in a place that has access to so many scholars, that that would be something that you would have to say astaghfirullah about. Dude, Definitely. Saying, yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's a pretty strong, that's a pretty strong rebuttal to what I said. <laughs> he said astaghfirullah. Yeah. Yeah. Inshallah, inshallah, inshallah. Don't, don't, don't worry about it. Relax. I'm, I'm, I got more coming. Inshallah. Don't relax. So, as I said, some scholars, mainstream opinion, have said that if you don't recite properly in the prayer, it renders your prayer invalid, right? And so, we want to be very, 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 very careful at you know at how we are reciting in the prayer and not be sloppy, right? In the same way that we're recommended to come to the prayer, looking well, smelling well, right, and so on and so forth, right? Uh, and so, yeah, so that's one. Surah Fatiha is the only surah in the entire Qur'an that's obligatory for us to recite in the prayer. If we don't recite it, you don't have a prayer. As the Prophet Sallallahu said, لا صلاة إلا بفاتحة الكتاب There is no prayer without the opening of the book and that is a clear reference to the uh, Surah Al-Fatiha. Alright, something else. He also referred, the Prophet Sallallahu himself also referred to Surah Al-Fatiha as the greatest surah in the Quran. He asked the Sahabi, right, in an authentic hadith, Shall I teach you a surah that is the greatest surah in the, in the Qur'an? And he said, he referred to it as Sabur al-Mathani, which is the seven oft-repeated verses. Surah al-Fatiha as well. And so this is a, these are some reasons why I decided to focus on Surah al-Fatiha and create the workshop around that with the hopes that we wouldn't stop at al-Fatiha. I can't tour around the country and teach people the whole entire Qur'an, right? A proper recitation of the whole Qur'an. But I can at least use this as a launch pad as a catalyst to inspire people, insha'Allah, to take what they learn from Al-Fatiha and apply it to other parts of the Qur'an and seek out teachers to help them take it to the next level. And that is the intention behind the workshop. Yes? Yes, yes. yes. Oh, no, no, outside of Arabia, it wasn't during the time of the Prophet. This is after he died. But there were people coming from outside. Like, 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 yes. And I'm sure not they were not on Arabic speakers. Right. So, because if, if it isn't, then then it's a bidah, right? What they're saying. If it's not in the no, Northern no, no, no. Quran, then how can no, they say? No, no, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be bidah because you have to also take into account certain things that happen in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu as well. It doesn't have to be necessarily in the Quran said explicitly this way. Did they come? They ha it's a whole system. It's a whole science, right? You have the science of fiqh, of usul al fiqh, right? Uh, the science that, that is used to derive these particular rulings that are all based and rooted in Qur'an and Sunnah. So if, if you have credible scholars, right, and in the, in the, what the Qur'an does say, say is الله الرسول الأمر منكم, right? That you obey Allah, you obey His Messenger, and those in authority over you. And so there are certain people who have been established as authorities in the religion throughout the century of Islam that have been established by all groups, right? Even though we have some certain groups, there are certain people who have been established by all groups as being people of authority, accepted people of authority, who have all agreed upon what I just said. All of them. All of them. Maybe. Yeah, like, okay. yes. You won't, you won't find a credible scholar who will say, it's just absolute nonsense. You will go to, look at Ibn Taymiyyah, look at Ibn Hajar Asqalani, look at, you know, all of the four imams of the schools of thought. Same thing. All of them will say the same thing. Ask. Just so ask. probably for the hundreds of millions of Muslims who don't have the right that we mm -hmm. all their namaz has been in. No, that's a good now. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah. Thank you. Because I normally follow that up with telling people this is about the people who are lazy. They have the capability to learn, the access to learn, the means to learn. 
and they choose not to, and that results in their improper per, per, um, recitation of the Quran. Which so is not, billions of Muslims, right? Because if most of us do have the means. We can just turn the YouTube on. And right, right. But also, what about what about the the millions of Muslims who neglect learning how to pray properly, and they're making all kinds of really huge mistakes? Are we going to say they get a pass just because they they didn't take the basics of like wudu, for example? We have the four things in the Quran that says they don't even know that. They're not even doing that properly. Why? Because they're being lazy. Are we going to say, well, since a million Muslims are doing that, they get a pass? No, they don't get a pass. Right? They don't get a pass just because a lot of people are doing it. It's a very <laughs> dangerous argument because using that, you can go to the extreme of everything and say that you can't get a pass. But, but this is your class. I don't want to yeah. distract it. But I'm just a little surprised by saying that your namaz is invalid if your pronunciation is not exactly what it should be. No, That's no, so you can, so here's, the, here's what it is. You work, if a person works and works and works towards proper pronunciation, but they can never achieve it, the Prophet ﷺ also said what? إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ niyat, right? That all actions are judged based on intention. So if your intention was to get to the point of perfecting your recitation, you will be judged according to what you intended, not what you actually achieved. And so their prayer, even if it's not, not correct, because they intended within themselves and actually made an effort to do it, inshallah, they will be a recorded, they will be um, uh, judged according to that intention. So it was benefit in your questions. Jazakallah khairan. Alhamdulillah. All right, so we can get started. So what we're going to do is um, uh, we're going to go through Surah Al Fatiha with a fine tooth comb, right? Ayah by ayah, right? Ayah by ayah. Letter, almost letter for letter. And the reason is because uh, the, the definition of tajweed, anyone know the definition of tajweed, the meaning of tajweed? Exactly what it, what it, what it means? Anyone? Oh, there's two mics. There should be a mic on both sides. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, oh, you, oh, because you're asking the question. Sorry, go ahead. I mean, you're answering the question. Yeah, bismillah. Bismillah. Is it um, to make something excellent or to do something your best? Yeah, yeah. To make something excellent, to improve something, make it great, you know, so on and so forth. This is the linguistic meaning of tajweed. There are two meanings. When, whenever, if, if any of you have ever studied um, any of the sciences of Islam, you'll notice something consistent in all of the books of, of Islamic science, of the various Islamic sciences. They, all, they always begin by defining terms. Because it's really important to understand terminology, of course, before starting to study something, right? And when they're defining, they define in two ways. They, they, they define what they say, al-lughawi, right, which is the linguistic meaning, and al-istilahi meaning, which is, which is the uh, technical meaning. Lughawi is just what the word means in language. Just what does the word mean by itself? And then istilahi, or technical meaning, is uh, a very specific uh, meaning that is within a particular um, subject matter, right? Like we have the word division in English in general. That means, right, what? Divide people, divide something up, right? Divide. But then you have division as it pertains to mathematics. This is the technical meaning of division, right? So the linguistic meaning to make something uh, excellent, to bring it to the point of excellence, uh, the epitome of excellence, as some scholars say, ghayatul ihsan, so on and so forth. And then we have the technical meaning which is giving each letter its right with regards to two things, pronunciation and characteristics. Every letter has a set of, uh, uh, of, 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 not a set, every letter has a point of articulation, a point in the mouth of the throat from which its sound originates. So for example, sad, tip of the tongue, Ta, tip of the tongue. Dal, tip of the tongue. Jim, sheen, ya, middle of the tongue. Qaf, kaf, back of the tongue. Kha, ghayn, this upper part of the throat, closest to the mouth. Ha, ayn, middle part. Hamza, uh, hamza, and ha, from the bottom, furthest point. N, 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 n. Every letter has a makhraj, or a point from which it originates in the mouth and in the throat. Beam, uh, sorry, beam. Ba, meem, fa, wow, lips, and so on and so forth, right? Also, Every letter has a number of characteristics. 
I can give you one example of characteristics because there's too many to go over, and this is not necessarily a Tajweed class. But to give you the best example I can give you uh, of, of a characteristic of a letter is like heavy and light. Every letter is going to be either heavy or light. With the exception of Ra and Lam, which can be both. And then you have Alif, which is shapeshifter. Right? Alif takes on the, the long Alif, takes on the characteristic of the le letter that it is attached to. So if Alif is attached to a heavy letter like Qaf, right? Heavy letter. We attach an Alif, it gets Qa. So now that Alif sounds heavy as well. If we attach uh, Alif to a light letter like Ta, then we get Ta. And now that Alif sounds light. And then you have the Lam, Allahu, right? But then you have, in other words, it's light. And so heavy and light, this is a characteristic of uh, uh, of letters, right? And so we have to state. So Tajweed is staying true to uh, staying true to these characteristics. Now, before we get started, I just want to give you one example of the existence of 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 uh, this level of detail in the recitation during the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So many of you may know. One of the foremost students, there are many, there's a list, a long list of people, sahaba, during the time of the Prophet ﷺ, who were the foremost students of Qur'an of the Prophet ﷺ. One of them, or one of the most notable of them, was Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu, right? So Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he's sitting with a student one day, right? And he is uh, teaching him Qur'an. The student is reading from Surah to tawbah right? This hadith is very detailed, mashallah. He's reading from Surah to tawbah And he gets to the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, masakin." And but he says fuqara short. And he says, masakin. And he says fuqara like that short. Abdullah ibn Masood stops and he says, No, no, no. Ma hakadha aqra'aniha Rasulullah. This is not how Rasulullah taught me how to recite this ayah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So then the, you know, the, 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 the other sahabi, he said, okay, then how is it that he taught you this ayah? Teach me. So then he repeated the ayah, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he repeated the ayah and he said, masakin." And he stretched fuqara. Right? What we know today to be for count or for beats, for harakat or whatever, right? But he didn't stop him and say, no, 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 no. This is called maddul muttasil, right? And we stretch it for four counts, right? And we did that. He didn't say any of that. He just said, this is not how the Prophet did it. So the main thing, now, now, here's it, now, before I get to that part, uh, uh, this is interesting because shortening fuqara does not change the meaning. You would think he would only correct him if it changed the meaning. It doesn't change the meaning, right? It doesn't change the meaning, right? But he stopped him and he said all of that. This is not how the Prophet ﷺ taught me how to recite this. Well, tell me how'd you do it? And he goes, and so that's a level, that's detail right there. You went too short and I'm gonna tell you, you gotta go higher. This is detail, mashallah. So this level of detail in the recitation of the Qur'an goes all the way back to the actual time of the Prophet Sallallahu So this is not just some made up fluff, right? This is from the Prophet Sallallahu So it's about reciting, it's not just about making egregious mistakes that change the meaning. No, those are obviously the most important. It's about reciting like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's about like being like the Prophet Sallallahu as much as we possibly can. And Tajweed is a great means to allow us to do, do that uh, in at least one way connected to the Qur'an. One of the, you know, the, the, the only last final living miracle that we have on earth. Alhamdulillah. So it, it, it's worth us paying this much attention to and giving this much uh, effort to preserving and learning, inshaAllah ta'ala. All right? So. Yeah. Uh, Ashir, right? Yes, sir. So, so you're saying that we should be reciting as the Prophet Muhammad so, so I'm reciting. As much as we possibly can based on, you know, teachers. Of course, and, we haven't seen him. We haven't sit with him. Okay, right. 
right? right? If we did, we would be able to say, okay, we're reciting like him. Right. This is like 1400 and some 50 years ago. And you know right? how it got to us? And people copied and copied and copied. And you know that. If it's copy of a copy of a copy of a copy is, can never reach the original, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Every copy, something gets degraded. And that's humans we're talking about, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? So there's gotta be something. Or we're saying that the tajweed today is exactly like the Prophet Muhammad so recited. As far as we understand, this is, this is what we believe because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Qur'an that he will specifically preserve his book. If you don't believe that, that's something that you, you have to work on yourself. However, I believe when Allah tells me, I will preserve my book. And so he has preserved his book. From the point that the Qur'an came down, you know what the Prophet ﷺ did? He had scribes that were ready to go. He would go into a very specific state, uh, state right, that he would go into, a, like a, almost like a trance-like state, right? When you read about, uh, when you read in the Ulum al-Qur'an and the sciences of the Qur'an, they talk about wahi and how it all happened, right? And so he would go into like a trance-like state, right? Start sweating, his body would become very heavy, and there were just certain things that they would visibly uh, show on his body that they knew he's about to receive revelation, right? When they saw this, the scribes went, boom, go get everything. Get ready to write. So they would go and they would grab whatever they could get. Parchment, skin, wood, stone. They would grab whatever they could get and they would sit down and they would wait for him to come out of the trance-like state. Right? And the, also the memorizers would gather as well. They had scribes, they had memorizers, and many of the scribes were memorizers as well, right? right. And this is during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu right? As soon as he came out of the state, he would recite, right? He would start reciting immediately. Boom, just like that. And what did the scribes do? Boom, they wrote it down. And what did they do after that? Boom, handed it over to the memorizers or memorized it themselves. So you're talking about from the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, from the time, uh, sorry, from the time the Wahi came down, it's been being memorized. And then they would teach, groups of them would teach other groups. And then groups of them would teach other groups. Do you know how tedious the process of compiling the Qur'an was? You know how many times they reviewed and how many ways they reviewed? SubhanAllah. They, when they were gathering everything in the time of Uthman especially, right, and they were putting everything into the, the, the Mus'haf that, that we have today, they had review after review after review. They had everyone they could possibly get set their eyes on that copy. Is that correct? Is there any mistake? Is there anything that needs to be fixed or changed? And, and, and so on and so forth. And then they would go to the next person, same thing, next person, same thing. And then they would recite it and so on and so on and so forth. It was one of the most incredible, incredible efforts of preservation that has ever happened in the history of the world, and non-Muslims admit this as well. Right. Non-Muslims admit to this and they give credit. Even though they don't believe in the prophet, prophecy and Allah and all this stuff, they give so much credit to the in, 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 immaculate preservation, history of preservation of the Qur'an, because there's nothing in the history of the world that has ever been preserved like it. No one memorizes their book like the Muslims memorize their book. You're talking about thousands upon thousands that turned into millions upon millions. And so they all got it. And then, they, and, then, and then we have this chain that we have in Islam, right? This chain of preservation that we have that goes down and down and down and so on and so forth. So with certain, with normal, non-miraculous things, yes, over time there will be deterioration. But we believe that the Qur'an is a miracle. And so it is not, it's not uh, unfathomable that Allah would choose his book to not be affected in the same way that these other worldly books, because the Qur'an is not a worldly book. It's not worldly. Right. It's otherworldly. So I, I see your point. That see the Quran point? is preserved and we have it. We can see it. We have millions of copies. There are billions now. Everybody has it in their phone or something like yes. that. The question is not about the writing, the Quran as in written state. The question is about the Tajweed, the whole Prophet moment. Everything that I just said about that it. applies to the Tajweed as well because it was preserved in the same way. I it see. was all preserved together. It was preserved together. The Tajweed was preserved together. Yes. So now, my somebody, teacher that I got ijazah from yeah. got his ijazah from someone else who yeah. heavily critiqued his recitation, mm -hmm. who got his ijazah from someone who heavily critiques recitation, going back to a sahabi that did just like Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, ma hakadha aqra'aniha Rasulullah. This is not how the Prophet sallallahu taught me how to recite this. This is how he recited it. Right. You see what I'm saying? That critique, that level of detail goes back to the time of the Prophet sallallahu right. And they're right. still doing it 
at this very moment, there are people saying this to someone right now that they're teaching Tajweed to. <laughs> so if some Arabic you know, speaker or who knows how to read Arabic, if they take that text of Surah Fatiha, can they recite it properly or no? Like a random Arab that doesn't that has yeah, it doesn't non-Muslim, and he just maybe they, he just became Muslim or something. But he knows how to Arabic, and he knows all these you know alphabets or whatever. He can probably generally pronounce all of the words in here, yes. But he would not know the proper Tajweed unless he studied it, yes. So if he doesn't study the Tajweed, his, he won't know it. Which is why we want to study Tajweed. Okay, see your point. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. All right, hopefully this is just fortifying everyone's iman, <laughs> inshallah. All right, so, so we get started. The first thing, in ayah one, I wanted to use the laser um, pointer, but we discovered that the light of the laser and the light of the TV doesn't mix. Doop, 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 All right, it, it doesn't mix. So, uh, so we just have to use our eyes very well, inshallah, okay? <laughs> So here, the ba, for those of you over there, look at the ba and the basmala, right? So, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. If I was to ask you what sound does ba kasra produce, what would you tell me? B, ah. Notice how no one said b. No one said b. That's because b does not exist in the Quran. I mean, in Arabic, the sound i, it doesn't exist. It's a. E, U, and in, in addition to alongside A, there's A. So A, A, E, and U. If you can get these four sounds down, you got about a third of Tajweed in the bag. Alhamdulillah. Done. Ready to go. And then you just got to work on everything else like Makharij and Sifat and this and that and so on and so forth, right? Um... And so, with basma uh, uh, bi, so if whatever sound is produced in a letter by itself, a combination of letter and haraka, right, and, and vowel, whatever sound that produces by itself is the same sound it will produce in a word as well. It's not going to be different. So we're not going to say ba kasra bi and then get to the basmala and say bismillah, right? So instead, what should it be? Bismillah. Bismillah, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Say that. So Bismi. All right. So Ba Kesra B. See all those Kesras down there. So we're gonna be doing a lot of this, right? In uh, in this this workshop, inshallah. Lots of uh, of paying attention to the harakat and making sure we're saying E, A, um. Uh, U and A and so on and so forth. All right. So Bismillah, kasra, 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 kasra. So instead of Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Say that again. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. So the next letter is that seen has sukun on it, and that sukun is visible. This means that we want to very clearly pronounce that scene. We want to hear the scene, right? We don't, we don't want to rush. Bismillah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Bismi, Bismi, you hear this? Bis, Bis, this is a characteristic of the scene, that it will have this clarity, right? This Bis, Bis, right? Almost whistling sound, but it's not a whistle, right? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Right. All right, so then we go next. We're transitioning from Bismi to the name of Allah. Now, we said that when the name of Allah, uh, when sorry, when the lamb comes in the name of Allah, it's going to be heavy. Now, there's one exception. When a kesra comes before the name of Allah, we're going to make the name of Allah, we're going to make that lamb light, right? So it's not going to be, instead of Bismillahi, it'll be Bismillahi. Believe it or not, a lot of people make that mistake. A lot of people say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, and that is a mistake, right? So it should be Bismillahi La La Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Right. 
And we also don't want to say like Bismillahi, la, la. So we don't want to say Bismillahi. We also don't want to say Bismillahi. Bismillah. The lamb is light. La, la. So Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Same thing with the meme. We don't want to say Bismillah, Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ma, 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 ma. Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. So next, we have the uh, the ha in Allah's name. We want to make sure that's ha and not ha. Changes the meaning, right? It changes the meaning. So we don't want to uh, swap out. These are these are major mistakes. In tajweed, you have what's called major mistake and minor mistakes, right? Major mistakes is any type of change that res uh, that a mistake that results in change of meaning. If you swap out a letter, if something should be ha, but you make it ha, this changes the meaning, right? It's going to either change the meaning or strip it of meaning. This is why tajweed is so important. This is why it's so important. I'm going to give you some real examples right in the Fatiha of how a meaning can be changed by a single letter, by messing up the makhraj of a single letter. And also, even a harakah, right? Did you know that these lines and dots and all this actually didn't exist uh, during the time of the Prophet ﷺ? You know why it came about? After the death of the Prophet ﷺ, during the time of the, uh, like, not too long after the Sahaba, the, the time of the Sahaba, around that time, right? Um, there was a man named Abu Al-Aswad, and he, his daughter, he was talking to his daughter. His daughter said, "Ma ajmalu sama." She looked at the sky. She said, "Ma ajmalu samai." Bama on the lamb of ajmal, and kisra on the hamza of sama. And her father responded. Abu Aswad responded. He said, "An nujum." He said, "The stars," because what she said was, "What is the most beautiful thing in the sky?" But what she meant to say was, how beautiful is the sky? That's all she wanted to say. How beautiful is the sky? But she ended up saying, as a result of different harakat only, the, the whole structure of the words are the same. But since she put a dhamma on the lam and ajmalu like that, and as samai kasra, it changed the meaning to, what is the most beautiful thing in the sky? So he answered that question because he was solid in his grammar. So he said, the stars. And she said, huh? No, I was just saying the sky is beautiful. And he was like, oh, man. He's like, We're, our, kids, our kids are losing the Arabic language. We have to do something about this. And that was the beginning of the uh, development of the haraka system. What she should have said was, ma ajmala sama'a. Fatha on both. That's what she should have said. But, you know, she's a little kid, you know, still pass. <laughs> well, now according to Abu al-Aswad, as a result of that mistake, we have harakat now, so that we can understand uh, as well and read. MashaAllah. All right. So, Bismillahi rahman rahim So, we want to make sure this is ha and not ha. We don't want to say Bismillahi rahmani A lot of people make this mistake. All right, next is going to the ra. Ra is one of those beefy letters, has lots of rules, right? A lot of rules. The only letter in the entire Arabic alphabet that has a whole section dedicated to it in Tajweed, and it's three levels. It's three levels, right? And so, um, we, uh, so we're not gonna get into that, but the basics is that if it has fatha or Dhamma involved in it, it's gonna be heavy. If it has Kasra, it's gonna be light. Khalas, that's all we need to know right now. Here, the, the, fat, the Ra has fatha. So we want to say it heavily. So instead of Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, right? Instead of Bismillah ar-Rah, we want to say Bismillah ar-Ra. Say ar-Ra. Ar-Ra. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Right, make it heavy, all right? Uh, and also it has shadda. We want to make sure we put shaddas. If we don't put shaddas on a, on a word, it, it's like dropping a whole entire letter. I mean, it's like, yeah, because any, a letter with shadda is equivalent to two, right? So if we drop the shadda, it's equivalent to dropping a letter, right? If I said to you, right, without all this example in the background, if I said, hey man, hand me that bop. Hand me that bop. You can say that what? That bop. What's a bak? You know the thing, man, that you open, you read with the pages? Oh, you mean book. And 
Just one letter. I just dropped one letter out. You have no idea what I'm talking about. Same thing. You drop a letter, no idea what you're talking about. You said something totally, totally different, right? So we want to make sure the shed does. Bismillahi, not Bismillahi. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, like that. All right, when we get to the ha here, we want to make sure this is ha and not ha, so the opposite. So not Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, also very, very common. And then we get here, Bismillahirrahman. So the, the extension that's in Allah's name and Ar Rahman as well, we want to make sure we're extending it, but not too much. Some, some people will tend to extend in order to further beautify. But understand that if it's wrong, it's not beautiful. If it's wrong, it's not beautiful. So we don't want to say, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, just because we can make it sound prettier. No. If it's, not, if it's wrong, it's not pretty at all. So, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. That's beautiful enough because as we understand, that is closest to what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did and that is beautiful, okay? And so, uh, don't want to overextend. So we got Sudra, same thing, heavy, Shadda. Same thing with Ha, next Ha, make sure it's Ha and not Ha. And then finally we add this meme and we're going to pause on that meme but we want to hear that meme clearly. I'm going to demonstrate the wrong way and then the right way. If I said Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, did you hear the meme clearly? Like clearly. Now I'll demonstrate the right way. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Did you hear that meme? Hear the difference? That's the way that we want to do that, inshallah. All right. So I'm going to say it one time. Repeat after me, inshallah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. All right. Now let's say it together three times and then I will pass the mic around if anyone wants to practice that and uh, possibly get corrected or maybe you'll just be flexing and uh, showing us how to do it, right? <laughs> Inshallah. All right. You know, every crowd, I always have like one spy in the crowd who's like an expert Tajweed person that's like trying to keep me on my toes. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to find out who you are. I got an idea of a couple of people. All right. Yalla. So uh, let's say it together at, on three. One, two, three. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Again. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. One more time. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. All right. So, brothers, sisters, is open to any of you who would like to give it a shot, inshallah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Jazakallahu khairan. Thank you. Amir, right? Amin. 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 Oh, sisters. This is the brother's mic. My bad, y'all. Any sisters want to give it a shot? No? I think you're the Tajweed spy. <laughs> She's like, I don't want to make him look bad. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah, that was good. Barakallahu fiki. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Barakallahu fiki, that was good. Jazakallahu khaira. Are you raising your hand? Yo, it wasn't, you weren't raising your hand? I, I kind of saw this light. No, it wasn't? Okay. Okay. Yeah, Iman. <laughs> <laughs> we got to treat this like a fundraiser, you know what I'm saying? You know at the fundraisers, you know, when they say like, you know, 500,000, you got to be careful not to like scratch your head. It's like a similar situation, you know what I mean? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay, jazakallah khaira. Hold it, hold it, hold it. All right. So that was good. But you said Bismillahirrah. You want to say the raw heavier. Bismillahirrah. Say Arrah. Say Ar Ra. Ar Ra. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. It's a lot better, mashallah. You can hear the difference. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. Hmm? She's shy, she's shy. 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم جزاك الله خيرا all right so first thing is the ba sharpness of the kasra instead of bismi you want to say bismi b b ba kasra b bismi so say it again بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. That's good. That first one was good. That bad. Now the only other thing is you want to lighten up the lamb in Allah's name. بسم الله in the meme in الرحمن instead of بسم الله الرحمن بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Kind of smiling when you say each of them. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. You got بسم الله down. Now the meme you want to do the same thing instead of الرحمن. Bismillahirrahman. Like the word man, man, right? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Bismillahirrahmanir. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. All right, alhamdulillah. You caught yourself. That's my favorite part of teaching Tajweed. And when people start catching their own mistakes, I'm like, ah, yes. <laughs> alhamdulillah. It means you're learning. All right. Okay, I mean, on this side. Yes, Bismillah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Barakallahu fiki. Okay, so let's uh, let's do. Bismillah. You want to lighten up on the lamb? Lighten up on the lamb instead of Bismillah. Bismillah. Go ahead. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. You can go straight through, but Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So just like you did la, you want to say ma. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. It's a lot better. Allahu Akbar. Good job, mashallah. It's excellent. Oh, all right. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I found my, my, my male um, Tajweed spy. You challenging me, bro? That was good, man. Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. It was really good. <laughs> all right. Any more? Any more Tajweed spy? I mean, um, Participants, good. Okay, we got one. Okay, we we'll, we'll do the sister. We'll just go like brother, sister, brother. So we do the sister, and then we'll come to you, and then we'll move on to the next area, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. 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 Bismillah ar-Rahman
You'll be all set, bro. I like that joint, like seriously. All right, ayah two. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. All right, so here we have, again, two visible sukuns here. Because you know in this earth manuscript, uh, a letter can also be considered sakina or having a sukun, right? Uh, if it simply doesn't have anything over it. So these are two ways that sukun can show in the Quran. Either it will be visible or it will be invisible. If it's invisible, it usually means that letter is going to be silent and we're not going to pronounce it. Like when we look at Ar-Rahman, it has nothing over it. So we're not pronouncing it when we connect. Well, you know, when, when we say it, we don't say it, we don't um, pronounce it. But in every letter that has the actual sukun visible, visible over it, you're always going to pronounce that. And you want to pronounce it clearly. So, Alhamdu, Alhamdu, Alhamdu. We want to say the lam clearly. We want to say the mean clearly. We don't say, Alhamdu, Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdu, like that. One, two, three. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Like that, alright? So Alhamdulillahi, like that. Now we get to the Kisra, right? Oh, oh, here's the example that I was talking about, right? By the way, Brother Munir, we definitely would do a halfway break, like, you know, for water, stretch, and this and that, and then we'll come back maybe 10, 15 minutes, then we come back and finish and do it, for sure. So just so you know, we will give you a break, inshallah. All right, so the alhamd. We want to make sure this dal is dal and not bad, and it's for a very important reason. What does alhamdu mean with dal? The way we see it, alhamdu, the praise, the praise, right? The praise, all praise, so on and so forth, right? Now, if I make that dal into bad, like many do, a lot of people recite this way, and they say alhamdulillahi, and they make the dal into bad. What does it mean with Bad? Alhamdu. What does that mean? Does it also mean praise? It doesn't. What does it mean? Sour. Sourness. Bitterness. One makhraj mess up. We mess up one makhraj. Praise turns into bitterness. A beautiful statement, praising and glorifying our Lord, turns into insulting Him. One letter mess up in a single word. Changes the meaning of the whole entire ayah. This is why tajweed is important. So now alhamdu, alhamdu, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Excellent. So the lam and lillahi, we want to make sure the kasra is sharp. So not lillahi but Lillahi, Lillahi, say Lillahi, Lillahi, instead of Lillahi, Lillahi, right? Uh, also, Shadda, Lillahi, not Lillahi, not Alhamdulillahi Rabbil, Alhamdulillahi, Shadda on the lamb. Uh, make sure the ha is ha is not in the ha, the ra has fatha, so it's going to be what? Heavy or light? Heavy. <laughs> said that with confidence too. Light. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was messing with it. It was good. It was good. I appreciate the participation. Don't, don't stop just because you made a mistake. All right. So, Rabbi. Uh, so, not Alhamdulillahi Rabbi. 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 Say Rabbi. Rabbi. Alhamdulillahi Rabbi Alameen. Good. And not Rabbil, Bil, Rabbil, back as Rabbi, Rabbil, Alhamdulillahi, Rabbil, Alameen. Excellent. And make sure it's shed on that bat as well. Rabbil instead of Rabbil, right? Rabbil. Now, also, this lamb has sukun on it. We want to hear that. We don't want to say Alhamdulillahi, Rabbil, Alameen. What? A lot of people say that, right? Rabbil Alameen. Rabbil Alameen. Say Al Alameen. Al Alameen. Say Al Alameen. 
العالمين. And we want to be clear and be sure not to make the ayn heavy and say العالمين, which a lot of people make that mistake. They'll say العا 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 smiling. الحمد لله رب العالمين. Say that. Right. So let's try not to bounce the lamb and say Rabbil Alameen, Rabbil Alameen, Al A, Rabbil Alameen. Say that. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Excellent. And just like clearly said that meme at the end of the first ayah, I want to clearly say the noon at the end of this ayah as well. Al-Alameen. And we don't want to go too long. We don't want to say Al-Alameen like that. Al-Alameen. All right. All right. Now, uh, let's say it together three times and then open the floor. One, two, three. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Alright, open, Bismillah Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All right, it's good. Two points. You kind of bounce the lamb a little bit. You say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. You want to hold those. Alhamdu. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. So minimize that bounce. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. First one was better, second one, can work on it some more, inshallah. But you know, you just kind of, it's going to take a little drilling to do it, inshallah. But all together, all overall, mashallah. Excellent. Okay, yeah, join, join. Alhamdulillah. Sisters. Okay. Bismillah. The confidence, mashallah. Love it. What's your name? Iman. Iman. Allah. Look at that. She's got faith in herself. Go ahead. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Very good, mashallah. Let's make that kisra in the lillahi a little sharper. Instead of lillahi, lillahi. Go ahead. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. MashaAllah. Good job, Iman. MashaAllah. All right, this side. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Barakallahu fi. Let's hold the lamb a little more. Alhamdu. Instead of alhamdu, like really fast. We're going to slow it down, inshaAllah, and kind of take our time. Alhamdulillahi rabbil Bil'alameen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ah, that sounds a lot better when you slow it down. Now the only other thing is make the raw heavier. Rabbi instead of Rabbi, Rabbi. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. It's better, mashaAllah. Jazakallah khair. I appreciate you uh, participating. Oh, sister. Yes, sister. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. And she put the little sweet touch on it, mashallah. Excellent job, mashallah. Um, wait, wait, I'm trying to, don't tell me your name. Hold on. Abby. Mm. What, son? Alhamdulillah. All right. <laughs> All right, we have, Bismillah. And then uh, we have young men. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Allah Akbar. Good job, Yusuf. MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah. Sister has um, volunteered yet? No? Not yet? Okay, we'll go to our brother and if you think about it. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Okay, that was good. That was good. Just lighten up on the lamb and El. You said Al, Alhamdu. You want to say El, Alhamdu. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. That was excellent. That was excellent. Sharpen the ba, the kisra on the ba, instead of Rabbil, Rabbil. 
الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين صلاة بارك جزاك الله خيرا thank you so much الحمد لله sister Ronzi okay we got sister here and then young man الحمد لله رب العالمين it was good الحمد لله let's lighten up the lamb and لله instead of لله say لله لا لله الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله بارك الله فيك thank you so much الحمد لله الحمد لله رب Bil-alameen. That was very good, alhamdulillah. Just lighten up just a teeny bit on the ra instead of Rubbi, ra, Rabbi. Alhamdulillahi Rabbi, Rabbi, instead of Rubbi. Go ahead. Alhamdulillahi Rabbi, Alhamdulillahi Very good. Let's get that ayin more clear. Instead of Al-alameen, Al-a. Al-alameen. Let's say it again from the beginning. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen That's what I'm talking about. Alhamdulillah. Barakallahu feek, ya Ameen. We got a sister? Okay, we got a sister. And then, and then, Abdul Basit. Aha. All right. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen MashaAllah, that was good. Just let's sharpen the the kasra in the uh, the in lillahi instead of lillahi, lillahi. Say that by itself. Say lillahi. Lillahi. That's excellent. Now repeat. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Excellent. Mashallah. Mashallah. Thank you so much. And then we have Abdul Basid. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. That was very good. Mashallah. Excellent job. Alhamdulillah. Oh, you or your son? You, ah, alhamdulillah, brother Nabil. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Barakallahu feek. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. He wanted to drop the mic, but he thought that would be too arrogant. I saw him. He was like. <laughs> we have a sister? Oh. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen It's good. Shorten the Alameen just a little bit instead of Al Alameen. Al Alameen. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair. All right. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All right. Say one more time. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Bil Alameen. So your ha sounded like ha. So you said alhamdu instead of alha ha alhamdu. Alhamdulillah. Ha. Alham. Say ha. Ha. Alhamdu. Almost. Got to work on just got to drill yourself on the makhraj of of ha. Ha comes from the furthest point down here. Ha comes from the middle part. Ha. Ha. She calls your Adam's apple to move a bit and like. Ha. Ha. All right. Yeah, inshallah, but we work on it. Other than, other than that, alhamdulillah, jazakallah wa khaira. All right, so we good? We set, we ready to go? All right, so let's say it together three more times, and then we will say one and two together, and then move on to three, inshallah, and do like that. All right, one, two, three. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Now let's say ayahs one and two together. One, two, three. Bismillahi Rahman Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Excellent. Alhamdulillah. Next ayah is ayah three we're just gonna kind of blow through that one because it's we pretty much covered it in the first ayah but there's one thing we didn't do and i'm going to demonstrate the wrong way to start this ayah off and you're going to tell me what my mistake is unless you've been in this workshop before 
that back corner, they all been here before. So y'all, you know. all right, alhamdulillah. So, uh, ayah three, the mistake, the wrong way to, to start it off. Ar-Rahmanir-Rahim. You know the mistake? What? It's supposed to be? What was the mistake? Can you clarify? Can you just tell us the mistake was when you said, for example? The, mis the mistake was when you said, Alhamdulillah. It's fine. All right. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. What was I going to say? I'm going to say it again. Ar-Rahmanir-Rahim. What was the mistake? The mistake was ar Ah, it's supposed it be? to be ar. Oh, okay. Can, can you can, can you next time can you correct me in private? Can you not? Can you just you know what I mean? Like in front of everybody? You know what I mean, I'm messing. <laughs> All right. So yes. No, he he what he was saying. I said ar instead of a ar. The alif should have been light instead of heavy. You're definitely right. 100 percent. Mashallah. Thank you. Um, Amin. Sadiqul Amin. All right, so Ar Rahmani, Ar Ra, say Ar Ra, Ar Ra, Ar Ra, Ar Rahmani Rahim, Ar Rahmani Rahim. All right, sisters, don't forget that you got a screen over there if it's easier for you to see. Uh, I know I'm standing over here, sorry, but it's, yeah, just in case if, you, if it's a little far for you, we do have the other screen over there. All right, Ar-Rahmanir-Rahim, all right, instead of Ar-Rahmanir-Rahim. And the same thing, after that beginning point, everything that we said in the other one applies. We'll make the ra's heavy, make sure they have shadda, make sure the ha is ha and not ha, and not overstretching Ar-Rahmanir-Rahim and stuff like that, and so on and so forth, all right? So... That's that. Now, let's say that together three times and then say from one to three and then we move on to four. One, two, three. Ar Rahmani Rahim. Again. Ar Rahmani Rahim. One more time. Ar Rahmani Rahim. Now, let's say one to three together from the beginning. One, two, three. Bismillahir Rahmani Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahmanir Raheem Excellent. All right. Next ayah, pretty simple too. Right? We have Maliki Yawmiddin. Now, common mistakes for this one is saying Maliki and making the meme heavy. Maliki. We don't want to say Maliki. We want to say what? Maliki. The meme is light. Stays light, always, right? Maliki yawmiddin. Again, we don't want to overextend it either. Maliki. Two beats, that's it. Maliki yawmiddin. Like that, all right? So, the next thing, the lamb. We, most people will say, Maliki. Maliki. But it should be what? Leaky, alhamdulillah. Y'all about to put me in retirement. I don't appreciate that. All right. Maliki, Maliki yawmiddin. Maliki Yes, sir. Oh, you're talking about Maliki. Yeah, yeah. So Maliki, this is um, from a couple of the other styles of recitation, a few of the other styles of recitation. Instead of Maliki yawmiddin, uh, Prophet Sallallahu was also recorded as saying Maliki, and you guys may be familiar with the uh, modes of recitation, right? And so just to be clear about the modes of recitation, the modes of recitation are absolutely nothing like the books of the Bible. Where you have like John, Jacob, you know, and all that, you know, that stuff, right? Matthew and Michael, I don't, I don't know the name, sorry, excuse me. But you know what I'm talking about, right? So we don't have all that going on, right? But these uh, modes of recitation are according to the various dialects that existed at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu of Arabic. And the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and for a long time after, until colonization became a thing, um, a, ma a major thing, um, 
the dialects of Arabic were all fusha. They were all pure Arabic. There was no outside influence. There was no mix of French, a little bit of English, a little bit of this, a little bit of Berber, a little bit of that. There was none of that at all whatsoever. All of the dialects were pure, pure Arabic, right? And so, as you all know, um, the Quran, uh, the, 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 the miracle of the Quran is found in uh, the language of the Quran, right? The language, the, uh, the information that's in it being before its time, and so on and so on and so forth, right? And so uh, every prophet received uh, miracles that, was, that were in accordance with whatever the going thing of that time was. So you say, for example, Isa alayhi salam, what was the going thing in his time? Medicine. So what was his miracle? Curing the leper, the blind. The, the, bringing the life back to de the dead back to life and and so on and so forth. Those were his miracles. They were consistent with whatever thing was like you know uh, going on at that was was really booming at that time. And uh, Musa, what was the thing of his time? Sorcery, magic, right? Exactly, right. So what was his miracle? The staff, snake, da da da. -da. It was consistent with that. The Arabs in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, what was their thing? Poetry. Right, poetry and rhymes and prose and this and that. Right, uh, they literally had like battles and stuff, man. This stuff was like serious business, right? Prophet Sallam had a personal poet that he would like sick on people. You know what I'm saying? Mashallah, and create poems and stuff like that. And so, um, so the Prophet Sallam received the Quran, but the Arabs were so rigid when it came to their dialects. That if he came to them reciting the Quran in another dialect, just noticing that it's a different dialect, they were like, ah, we didn't want to hear it. So what did the Prophet do? He requested via Jibreel alayhi salam to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he send him the Quran in the dialect of these other people. And then he did that again. And he did that again until he reached seven modes of recitation. However, these modes, they do not change, they do not fundamentally change the meaning. So we look at Maliki. Versus Maliki. What does it mean? King of the Day of Judgment, if you say Malik. Owner of the Day of Judgment, if you say Malik. Fundamentally, at the end of the day, do we not understand the same exact thing? If Allah is the King of the Day of Judgment, He's owner of the Day of Judgment because a king owns his kingdom. Thus, right? Malik, we say He's owner of the Day of Judgment. The end result is what? He's calling the shots on the Day of Judgment. We can't understand anything different from either one of those uh, uses make sense, right? So yeah, and then you have differences like versus right? We have differences like versus versus Literally, that's a real one. Pausing like that, right? And so on and so on and so forth. So these types of um, differences, they definitely don't change any meaning. It's just how you say it. Yes. Is he a Malik today? Yeah. Why is he emphasizing Yom Din only? He's talk because he's talk. He's here. He's talking about the Day of Judgment, so he's only talking about Day of Judgment. But of course, in other parts of the Quran, he specifies that he's in control of everything always. But right here, he's he's choosing to talk about the Day of Judgment because that is our that what is that's our final abode, and that is the day that matters most more than today. Today does not matter as as much as the day of judgment. So he's talking about day of judgment in this case. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. uh, you gave the example of two different dialects, mm -hmm. and you gave an example of Maliki versus Maliki, right. and in my mind. Owner and king are very, very different things, right? I mean, king has a kingdom but doesn't own it versus owner. So what I'm trying to understand is that you started off saying that there is a science of tajweed and you have to be exactly right. But then you gave example of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he was actually flexible and open to different dialects. Right. And even the meaning is different, but you're okay with that, but not other people who well, are no, 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 Arab no, speakers not, doing it. So not nothing. So one thing to be clear about is not what I'm okay with, right? This is this is like you know, uh, you're talking about uh, uh, centuries of scholarship, right? I'm not saying anything to you that I came up with in a lab. I didn't go in my like 
office and just say, I'm going to cook up some stuff and teach these people this stuff, right? This is all stuff from, from our scholars, right? Now, if you say Malik versus Malik by itself, then perhaps you can make an argument that they mean different things. But in Arabic, Maliki Yawmiddin, this is Mudaf, Mudaf Ilay, right? This is like possessor, possessed, right? And so as a compound, as a construct, they mean exactly the same thing. He's the king of the day of judgment and the owner of the day of judgment as a compound, like together, that means the same. Because if you say if he's the king of that day, he is what? He is in control of that day. Versus also being the owner of that day, then he is in control of that day. So it's not about the word, what it means just individually, but also what it means in connection. Because the two in Arabic, Maliki, Yawmi, it can't, they can't be separated. You can't separate Malik or Malik from Yawmi din You can't separate the two. No, you're, you're absolutely right, but yeah. it's not just here. Right? I'm sure the Maliki, Malik applies to no, the only here. In, yeah, it's only in Quran too. Right? No, it's only here. The, the word Malik and Malik is only different here. Everywhere else is pretty much going to be okay. the same. Yeah, it's consistent, yeah. Right, it's a good. it's a whole science. So we can't like we can't like really, you know what I'm saying, delve into it the way that it needs like the dialects. That needs like its own workshop. Right? Even at the end of the workshop, if you're not if you haven't like you got to like study it to like really understand it. It can be confusing if you only get like little tidbits and pieces. Kind of like philosophy and like some other things. If you only like a little bit, it's like confusing, but you have to really dive deep. It's like a, it's a saying of the scholars, I can't remember the, the verbatim, but they, when they talk about philosophy, they say that you find misguidance in its, uh, in its like shores or in its shallowness. If you, don't, if you don't go deep enough, right, then you'll find confusion and kufr, right? But it's when you go deep that you really start to understand. With the, when it comes to the modes of recitation, it's similar to that. If you kind of just do like eh, surface level, it'll mess you up. So you got to really go in. Go in and get it deep, inshallah. Brother Nabil. Yeah, I think the confusion that some people might have is uh, with the with the different um, uh, recitations is that the words are not interchangeable throughout the Quran. Okay? It's specific to this ayah and specific and it's in specific places. So right, right. you can't just mess it up by saying, Okay, I'll take the way it's recited here and apply it to the rest of the Quran. You can't do that. Right. So for example, you have قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ مَلِكِ النَّاسِ There's no other mode that's going to say مَلِكِ النَّاسِ It's not. It's مَلِكِ النَّاسِ right? So that's specific to this particular uh, uh, case here. Yes. Yeah, sorry, I know for the sake of time, um, and I feel like I got my answer, uh, the last two brothers that shared, um, but just one more time, I guess, to kind of recap and get a final line. Um, so I know that's like a, the, and I don't know Arabic word grammar that much, you know, just you know, very little, but okay. so like meme, lamb, cough makes the word malik or king, I guess you can say. Mm -hmm. So it's the same, it's the same word, meme, lamb, cough, but when calf, it comes to a uh, calf, yeah, meme, lamb, a calf. And um, so it's the same written letters, but the dialect wise, one would pronounce it Malik, one would pronounce it Malik. Um, but because of the context that it's in, in, that, in this sentence, in this ayah, that therefore it, uh, the meaning of it stays the same. Otherwise, the construct of this, uh, yeah, yeah, being like connected is like owner of the day of judgment, king of the day of judgment. If you understand, it's, it's easier to explain to people, like if somebody knew grammar really well, but they didn't know anything about the modes, mm. You could explain it from a grammatical standpoint, that'll make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have like a, you know, if you don't know grammar of mm -hmm. Arabic, it's a little, little harder to explain. Because yeah, yeah as, a, as, a, as a grammatical construct, mm -hmm. they're, they're very strongly tied. You can't separate them. So okay. you can't really break it down to like, well, the word by itself, you can't do that because they're tied. Right. That's, that's what I kind of got from, yeah. So that basically the purpose of the Quran, of the eye itself is... That then at the end of the day is what you're saying, the meaning of it meaning, as a whole. Exactly. Yeah. Meaning Whether as it's well. Malik or Malik, it's it, because it's you're irrelevant. putting... Irrelevant. Exactly. Now, now, we would have a case if somebody said, you know, like some totally different word that doesn't give the meaning that he's in control of that day. Then we'd be like, all right, what's going on here? Something's different. So, yeah. Alhamdulillah. All right. So, yes. Just an immediate point of information. Our local scholar, Ali al has a lecture 
uh, our local scholar from Zeytuna Institute, Professor, has a lecture, uh, actually he gave here at MCC, specifically on this point. Uh, please look, look at that at, at MCC, might answer some of your questions. Oh, that's good, alhamdulillah. Is, it, is this something we can provide for people? Yeah, to perhaps you could send a link for that specific... Uh, Okay. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, we'll send out the link. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Thank you for that. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> yeah, here it's Maliki. Yes, it's just he was just saying it because uh, he, he's familiar with another style that says Maliki. Like I recite in Warsh, like when I did the Juma yesterday, okay. I said Maliki Yomiddin because I, I my primary qira'a is actually Warsh, and believe it or not. The Warsh dialect, and this is agreed upon across the board as well, that the, the Warsh dialect is the closest to the dialect of the Quraysh, mm -hmm. which was the dialect of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In fact, so okay. uh, I don't want to take too much time. I want you to comment a little bit on the accent. Like we talked about dialect, but there's also a subject of accent. Someone is not born Arabic, has mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. some difficulty to say ha. Yes. Ha. Yes. What will be the play here on the Tajweed? How can you give some advice? I'm fighting. Right. Mm -hmm. That that comes with studying tajweed. So the very one of the very first things we study in tajweed is makharij al huruf, and that comes with practicing the pronunciation of the letters. I have a whole entire like like breakdown of like studying the makharij like super in depth. Not just sitting there saying qaf 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 qaf. No, but you're saying qa i u aqo iqo uqo aqa aqi aqo so on and so on and, da, 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 and so on and so forth. So like all the the, the possible ways that that letter can uh, manifest in the Quran, you work on that when you do makharij al huruf. All of the possible ways, yeah, or, or even ways that it might not actually even show up, but just to practice it and get full practice of it. So jazakallah khair. Yeah, let's break, inshallah. Yeah. So all right. So let's say, um, oh, how did it go up? Well, we'll leave it like that. It's fine because we know the beginning. All right. Let's say together from ayah 1 to ayah 4, inshallah, and then we'll go on to ayah 5. 1, 2, 3. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar Rahmanir Rahim. All right, so um, we actually weren't finished with Maliki Yomidin, so let's just finish up with that really quickly. So we said Maliki, Maliki Yomi, right? The wrong way to say it is saying Yomi, and this is very common to say this way Maliki Yomidin, Yomi. But Ya Fatha makes what sound? Ya. Yeah. Remember what I said, whatever sound uh, a letter vowel combination makes by itself is what is, is what is going to make in a word so it doesn't go from ya fathaya to ya fathayo just because we put a, a wow after it it's still ya so instead of yawmiddin what should it be yawmi maliki yawmiddin like that so say say that say yawmiddin maliki yawmiddin Right, alhamdulillah. So uh, the last thing is making sure we put shadda on that dal. Yawmiddin as opposed to yawmiddin, yawmiddin, yawmiddin. Like that. All right, let's say that together three times. One, two, three. Maliki yawmiddin. Again. Maliki yawmiddin. One more time. Maliki Yawmiddin. Excellent. All right. So, uh, do we want a just a few people, just a few people to demonstrate that, and and we will move forward, inshallah. We got a mic on this side. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Where is it? Who got it? Oh, okay. We got Ibn Nabil over there. I mean, yeah. If, what's his name? Adam. 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 Maliki Yomidin. Good job. Now just say, instead of Yomi, say Ya. Yaumi. Yaumi. Maliki Yalmidin. Yaw. Yaumi. Maliki Yalmidin.
TV? Not yell. Yow, woo, yow. You see my mouth? You see my mouth? Say, not, not yell. Yow. Yow. Maliki, yow. There you go. Yes. Good job, mashallah. Good job. Good job, Adam. Alhamdulillah. All right? Abby. On this side? Yeah. Abby. Abby. Maliki, yow, miti. Very good, mashallah. That was very good. Excellent, mashallah. Maliki, yow, miti. Excellent, mashallah. Very, very good. Over here? We, not yet? Okay, so we're here. Maliki Yomitin. Very good. Just say Yaumi instead of Yomi. Yeah. Yaumi. Maliki Yomitin. Excellent. Very good. MashaAllah. All right. So is Sister Heather doing it? Okay. Yay. <laughs> Maliki Yomitin. That was good. Just sharpen the kasra on the lamb instead of maliki. 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 Maliki yaumidin. All right, almost. Say mali. Maliki. There you go. Maliki. Maliki yaumidin. That's a much better, mashallah. Thank you so much. Alhamdulillah. Maliki yaumidin. Excellent job, mashallah. Barakallahu feek. All right. Oh, sister. Nadia. Nadia, mashallah. Maliki Yawmiddin. MashaAllah, Barakallahu Fiki. Excellent. Maliki Yawmiddin. That was good, Alhamdulillah. Let's, let's lean on the ma instead of me, maliki. Say maliki. Ma instead of me. Maliki. Very good. And then Yawmi instead of Yomi. So Maliki Yawmiddin. Maliki Yawmiddin. All right. One more try with Yomi. Say Yaw. Yeah. Yawmi. Yaw. Yeah. Say Yeah. Yeah. Yaw. Yaw. There you go. That's it. Yawmiddin. Yawmiddin. Maliki Yawmiddin. Maliki Yawmiddin. Almost. You guys, definitely, it's definitely better than when you started. Alhamdulillah. Good job. What's your name? Yusuf. Yusuf. Allahu Akbar. Brother Nabil, your flashlight's on. I don't know if you realize it. <laughs> All right. So, yes, you want to do it? Oh, Maliki Yawmiddin. Good job, alhamdulillah. Just make the, the lamb more sharp. Maliki instead of maliki. Maliki. Mm. Maliki yaumidin. Yaumidin. With emphasis on the dal. Yaumidin. Maliki yaumidin. Okay, so don't say yau. You want to say yau. Yaumi. Yaumi. Like that. Maliki yau midin. Almost, you're saying yau, yau. Yeah. Don't don't put an yeah. extra vowel in the beginning. I mean in the middle. Don't say yau. Say say yau. 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 Not yau. 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 Right. If you think why, do you know Arabic? I mean, like um, read Arabic. All right. So think y a w m. How does that sound to you? Y A W M. Yeah, yeah that's it. Yaum. Yaum. But not yeah. You wouldn't say Y A W M is Yaum, right? You would say Yaum. Yaumi. 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 Yes. Alhamdulillah. That's a lot better. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. It's excellent. All right, so let's get moving. One, two, three. Let's say it three times again. One, two, three. Maliki yawmiddin. Again. Maliki yawmiddin. One more time. Maliki yawmiddin. All right. So um, now let's say one to, we said one to four. So let's go to five, inshallah. All right. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een So Iyaka with Shadda, like that, right? 
We want to make sure we don't say إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ This is very common with this ayah. And it's very problematic too. Because إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ This is saying you, Allah, you alone do we worship. So we're talking about worship here. So we want to make sure that we're saying that word properly because it's a reference to Allah. So if we mess it up, it becomes a reference to something other than Allah. That makes sense? So that's why it's very important that this one is super solid. So not iyak. Iyaka. Say that. Iyaka. Ah, iyaka. Iyaka. Like that. So, and we don't want to do one and not the other. A lot of times people will say, iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Or iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. We want to do both. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Like that, all right? So, um, so iyaka, we want to do like that. We want to make sure the kaf is iyaka and not iyaka. A lot of people make that mistake. A lot of people say, iyaka na'budu. We don't want to make the kaf into a qaf. It's ka, ka. Iyaka. Say that. Iyaka. Like that, all right? Iyaka na'budu. We want to say na'budu. Make sure that noon is light and not heavy. Not na'budu, na'budu, or na'budu. Some people make the dal into dad as well. Neither one. Na. Say na. Na budu. Na budu. Iya ka na budu. Right. And now what we don't want to do, which is a very common mistake in this ayah as well, is stretching the dal. Saying, Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka. A lot of people make that. I mean, like, a lot of people make that mistake, right? So, na iyaka na'budu wa iyaka. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka. Notice how I didn't stretch. Na'budu wa Na'budu wa iyaka Like that Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in Say that Alright well, um, So na'budu wa iyaka Again repeat So we want to say the same thing Nasta'in Not nasta'in A lot of people say nasta'in nasta ta Ta, light. Nasta'in. Say that. Nasta'in. Instead of nasta'in. And also instead of, and not nasta'i. Nasta'in. Like a lazy. Nasta'in. Nasta'i. Nasta'in. Say that. Nasta'in. Like that. Alhamdulillah. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in Excellent, let's say it together three times One, two, three Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in Again Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in One more time Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in Excellent. Now we get volunteers. We can get someone else to do it um, in, your, in your place. One, maybe one of the young guys? Yeah. You want to volunteer? You can recite and also help pass around the mic. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. You, are you okay with that? You want to do it? Okay, well, let's do it. Go ahead. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in All right, it's good. But what you, what you want more shedda as, as opposed to like stretching it. So what you said was iyaka as opposed to iyaka. Do you hear the difference between iyaka and iyaka? Do you hear the difference? Now try like that. Say iyaka. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka Wa iyaka. Wa iyaka nasta'in. 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 Barakallahu fi. Good job, mashallah. Okay. Are oh, you gonna do it? Okay. Okay. We don't want to put like a, a, a like a chop 
in between the iyaka between the alif and the kaf, right? So we don't want to say iyaka, iyaka, iyaka. So go all the way with no stop. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. All right, all right. So you did better on, the, on that mistake, but you said nasta, nasta. Notice it's a ta. Nasta'in. Nasta'in. Yes, sir. So again, you want to say it again? Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Nasta. Alright, alhamdulillah. So two things you want to kind of drill yourself on is making sure you go the distance with the ya. Iyaka and don't cut it off at any point. Iyaka on both. Iyaka and then nesta, nesta, ta, nesta'in. And you'll be good inshallah. Barakallahu feek. Alright, sisters, and then we'll get the brother. Yes? That was very good, mashallah. But let's just say the last one. Say, try to say more of that. Ain, nasta'i, ain, nasta'in, nasta'in. Inshallah, work on that ain. But it's good, mashallah. Overall, mashallah, very good. Alhamdulillah. Good job, mashallah. This side. Okay, mashallah. Now you stretch that dal, you said na'budu wa iyaka, but you want to keep that, that dal short. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. You heard the difference? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka mm. nasta'in. You're the first person to get it after me just saying <laughs> it one time. Most of the time, this is what I have to do nine times out of ten. You made it nine times out of ten. Now as far as you do nine times out of ten, when people make that mistake, I make the correction and they repeat the mistake. And then I make the correction and then they repeat the mistake. And then I say, all right, let's isolate. And I'll have them say, na'buduwa, na'buduwa, like three times. And then they say it right. You skipped all that. Allah, Allahu Akbar. May Allah increase you. Alhamdulillah. Yes, Yusuf, right? Adam. Yeah. All right, very good. Just say, all right. Right? So, like, separate those letters, right? Instead of na'budu. Na'budu. Go ahead. It's a lot better. Now, let's try one more thing. Instead of na'budu, na'budu, na'budu. Iyaka na'budu. Go ahead. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'i. Takbir. Allahu Akbar. Good job, Adam. Alhamdulillah. All right. Oh, sisters. You want to do it? Oh, no, that wasn't. What was that? I thought that was like a thumbs up. Like, yeah, give me the mic. Oh, you were saying good job to your brother. My bad. No, so you're going to do it or no? Yeah. Okay, Bismillah. <laughs> You say what? Two daughters. Oh, okay. So it's her. Uh, what's your name? Nora. Nora. Okay, she wants to. Well, then Nora can go after Abby. All right, good. We'll hold it. All right, good job. But not, and instead of not, but do say na budu. Say bu na budu. Na budu. Now say it again from the beginning. Iyaka. Iyaka na budu. Good job, mashallah. Good job. All right. Uh, and then we're going to know go before the. That was good. The second ya yeah could have had a little more shadda. So. Let's say it again. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. MashaAllah, much better. Alhamdulillah, barakallahu feek. Um, your sister was the one that was like, light. That was you? That was her? That was? That was? <laughs> MashaAllah. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Good job, MashaAllah. Excellent. 
All right, we got one more. We got any sisters, any more sisters that want to do it? Or are we we're done on that side? Okay, all right, we'll take the one more brother and then we'll keep it pushing, inshallah. <laughs> it's perfect. Alhamdulillah. All right, so let's say it together three more times. One, two, three. إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ Again. إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ One more time. إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ Now let's go one to five, inshaAllah. One, two, three. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين Excellent. It'd be messed up if I stopped right here and was like, yeah, we finished. I'm leaving, right? It'd be like a cliffhanger, right? <laughs> I know a brother came to me. I did the workshop in Puerto Rico, and we took a break halfway through, and we prayed. And he was like, man, I had confidence all the way up until I had five. And then I didn't want to say anything after that because we only got to five. I was like, oh, man, that's messed up. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. All right, so uh, next ayah. إِهْدِينَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Whew, this one's... A little loaded because a lot of people, it's not really loaded, but uh, it's loaded with common mistakes that people make. Uh, so here, a lot of people will make the sad into seen. A lot of people make the raw light. A lot of people t turn the ta into ta. So like sirata, is like, obviously the whole thing is messed up for a lot of people, right? Uh, and then here, alladhina, a lot of people don't put the shadda on the lamb. And then some people turn the dhal into za and say alladhina. Right? Instead of alladhina, some say alladina with dal. Right? Uh, and then here, anamta. People say anamta. It's like, whoo, do 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 do. So much, right? Like in, in this one. So we want to say, oh, we're not here. We're here. Oh, my bad. I just did the whole breakdown of the wrong ayah. All right. So, ihdina. This one, uh, I would say a half of like that. So we get a lot of um, not sh non sharp kesras, right? So, ih. Ihdina as opposed to Ihdina. Ihdina. Say Ihdina. Ihdina. Right. Instead of I. I. Ihdina. Like that. Right. And then we also get a lot of people saying Edina. Edina. Edina Sirata. Instead of Ih. Say Ih. Ih. Ihdina. Ihdina sirata like that. So ihdina. So then we get the so there's a transition from ihdina to al sirata where we shorten the noon because it's connecting to what's coming after, but it should stay light. A lot of people will turn this noon heavy before getting to the sad and say ihdina sirata. But Remember, giving each letter its right with regards to pronunciation and characteristic. The characteristic of noon is light. That is light, one of them. One of the characteristics of sod is that it's heavy. So we want to maintain the lightness of the noon and the heaviness of the sod. And so we say, <laughs> Try to say that. <laughs> right. So we don't want to make the, the sod light because the noon is light. And we don't want to make the noon heavy because the sod is heavy, which is what a lot of people do. Either they'll say ihdi nasi or they'll say ihdi nasi. We want to be in between ihdi nasi. Say nasi. Nasi. Ihdi nasi rata. Ihdi nasi rata al mustaqim. Right, so ihdina sirata. So we want to make sure the sod is is heavy, si, and not si rata. Uh, and uh, also make the ra heavy, al sirata instead of ihdina sirata, ihdina sirata. 
instead of ihdina sirat al mustaqim ihdina sirat al mustaqim so people swap the ta and ta and say sirat ihdina sirat al mustaqim but it should be the other way ihdina sirat al mustaqim all right so ihdina sirat al mustaqim اهدنا الصراط المستقيم. And finally, we want to say المستقيم and not المستقيم. Not المستقيم. المستقي. قي. Say قي. قي. المستقيم. اهدنا الصراط المستقيم. Let's say that together three times. One, two, three. Ihdina al-sirat al-mustaqim. Ihdina al-sirat al-mustaqim. Ihdina al-sirat al-mustaqim. All right. Let's get volunteers. Bismillah. All right. Abdul Basito. Ihdina al-sirat al-mustaqim. Almost. That's very good. Now, just make the ha, ha instead of ha. Don't say ih. Say ih. 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 You're right. Instead of ih. Ihdina. Ihdina al-sirat al-mustaqim. All right. Almost. Now, ihdina al-sirat. Not ihdina al-sirat. إهدنا الصراط. Go ahead. إهدنا الصراط المستقيم. All right, we're getting closer. Now make the ta heavy instead of إهدنا الصراط ال. Say إهدنا الصراط ال. قل. إهدنا الصراط المستقيم. A lot better. ما شاء الله. بارك الله فيك. Good job, Abdul Basim. Oh, sister, sister. Not yet. Okay, okay, we got one. And then, what's your name, brother? Brother, what's your name again? Muzaffar. Muzaffar, mashallah. Ihdina sirat al-mustaqim. That's good, mashallah. Let's make the noon lighter instead of ihdin nus. Ihdina, na, ihdina sirat al-mustaqim. Go ahead. Ihdina sirat al-mustaqim. It's a lot better, mashallah. Barakallahu fiki. Good job. Brother Muzaffar. إهدنا الصراط المستقيم. That's good. ما شاء الله. Say one more time. إهدنا الصراط المستقيم. That's good. The only thing is make the lam a little lighter instead of إهدنا الصراط ال. إهدنا الصراط المستقيم. إهدنا الصراط المستقيم. It's a lot better. ما شاء الله. May Allah bless you. Sisters, anyone? Okay. إهدنا الصراط المستقيم. That was good. Say one more time. إهدنا الصراط المستقيم. All right. Now the 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 قاف المستقي. Say قي. كي. قي. كي. المستقيم. المستقيم. It's better. I can hear a difference from you know from the first one. It sounds very explicitly like كاف, and this one is a little less. So you just gotta work on your Makhraj or your pronunciation of Qaf and then you'll get it yes. for sure. Thank you so much. Alhamdulillah. She's getting all the ayahs in. She's getting it all in. She's, she's walking away with a fully transformed, inshallah. Ihdina sirat al It's good. Make the sad a little heavier. Ihdina si. Si. When I hear si. Ihdina sirat al Okay. And a little less of the. It's like a sound you got in there with the ha. I can't. Um, like a rustly sound. Ih. Make it more clean. إهدنا الصراط المستقيم. إهدنا الصراط المستقيم. الله بارك ما شاء الله جزاء ما شاء الله. Excellent, excellent. All right. So, oh, we have another one. إهدنا الصراط المستقيم. المستقى instead of المستا المستقيم. المستقيم. All right again. No no إهدنا sorry. إهدنا الصراط المستقيم. الله بارك ما شاء الله بارك الله فيك. Thank you so much. All right. 
So, uh, yes. No, no, do it. Idina Sirotol Mustaqi. Excellent job, mashallah, barakallahu feek. All right, let's say it together. One, two, three. Idina Sirotol Mustaqi. Again. Idina Sirotol Mustaqi. One more time. Idina Sirotol Mustaqi. Now, uh, one, two, six. And then we have one ayah left after that. And we are done. All right, so stay with me. <laughs> All right, one, two, three. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar Rahmanir Rahim. Maliki Yawmiddin. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een Ihdina s-sirat al-mustaqeem Alright, so now we got the last ayah But before we get here, I want to tell you Which also, also part of what you're experiencing here Is uh, one of the uh, uh, biggest requirements for studying Tajweed and really any science, but in particular, there's an extra emphasis with Tajweed. Uh, there are three things that you need in order to really be successful in Tajweed. Number one on the list would be humility. If you're not humble, if you don't have humility, you will not go too far in Tajweed. You will never reach mastery at least. You might get really far, right? Maybe if you're like on your own and you got a really good sense of like picking up languages and pronunciations and all that stuff, you might get really far on your own. But if you can't accept, okay, maybe I am making a mistake, maybe I don't understand this very much, uh, and so you humble yourself and you, you just kind of put that guard down and allow yourself to receive, you will hit a ceiling, you'll hit a cap, and you won't be able to go beyond that. So humility is extremely important when it comes to uh, studying Tajweed, and really any science, but specifically Tajweed as well. Uh, and then the next thing is patience. You're really going to need a lot of patience, right? We've been sitting here for a while now, right? Just doing Fatiha. We're not even done yet, right? Two hours maybe, right? We've been sitting here. This is what you, this is a little taste of what you need to really, to, 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 traverse the path of Tajweed and really go on this journey of Tajweed, it's like this on steroids. On steroids, you need a lot more patience than what you're having just being here. This little bit of time, this is not a lot of time. This is not a lot of time. It may feel like a long, a long time. This is not a long time in comparison to what you really need if you really want to be successful in Tajweed and really make some major, major uh, progress. And the last thing <clears throat> is perseverance, right? Definitely gonna need that perseverance, why? We're talking about doing this, what we just did today, to 600 pages of the Quran. <laughs> Can you imagine? Like, no lie. I had to do this, like this, for the whole entire Quran. That is gonna take a while. Some people might be able to do it in a matter of months. Some people, it might be years before you actually get to the end. And you know what might happen? You might get to the end after a few years and your teacher might say, still not ready for that ijazah. Need you to do a second round. And you might do a second round. It might take a few more years. And you might be like, not just yet. I need you to do a third round. And you gotta be, anything that will keep me engaged with the Quran, I'm all in, however long it takes. We got to be in it for the long haul, no matter what. Even though, I, I, you know, I may have finished a couple, like, whatever styles, da, 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 there's still more to do. There's still another style of recitation that you could cover, right, and perfect that. And you can move on to a third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and so on. So, really, this is a lifelong journey from the cradle to the grave. Cradle to the grave, all right? So, it's a lifelong journey. So, put that in your heads, inshallah. So, those three things, humility, top of the list, patience, and definitely perseverance. Keep it going, inshallah, all right? So we're at the end, though, alhamdulillah. What we're going to do is I'm going to break this into two parts, practice it in two parts, but then when we demonstrate, we'll demonstrate it as a whole single ayah, inshallah. When we pass the mic around, we'll do it as a whole ayah, all right? So, <clears throat> finally, we're going to do sirat al-ladheena an'amta alayhim. Break. Practice that. 
and then do the second half and then I'll open up and do it all together all right so sirat alladhina an'amta alayhim so I kind of prematurely already gave you a big breakdown of the first part right but before so we want to make sure the sad is sad and not seen we want to make sure the ra is heavy sli say sli sli not sli sli but sli sli sirat sirat Sirata. Sirata. Right, very good. Uh, Sirata al-ladheena. Sirata al-ladheena. So, shedda on that lamb. Not Sirata al-ladheena. Sirata al-ladheena. Sirata al-ladheena. Very good. And then make sure we're not saying Sirata al-ladheena. There's no, there's not za. Thal, tongue between the teeth, not behind the teeth. Za only requires the tongue to be behind the teeth, not between. So we want to say, Sirat al-Ladheena, the, the, al-Ladheena. Say that, al-Ladheena. Sirat al-Ladheena, Sirat al-Ladheena. All right, the next thing is, An'amta. A lot of people will say, An'amta, An'amta. But what does An'amta mean? What is An'amta? What does that mean? It's from, from ni'mah, from the same root as ni'mah. It means to bestow blessings upon, right? But when I say anamta, this, now this becomes a word in Arabic from anama yunimu, which means to put to sleep. How different is that from the intended message, <laughs> right? From nom, yeah. Anama yunimu, to put to sleep. When you say anamta, the path of those whom you put to sleep. It's weird, right? It's interesting. But he's in the path of those upon whom you have bestowed your blessings. Like, whoa, right? Totally different spectrums, right? Opposite, opposite ends, right? So, صراط الذين أنعمت Say that. Just أنعمت. Let's say أنعمت actually by itself. Say أنعمت أنعمت Instead of أنعمت Sirat al-Ladheena an'amta alayhim Alright, let's be sure not to um, bounce and say ana ana'amta Sirat al-Ladheena an'amta alayhim Right Excuse me. So, Sirat al ladina So, we want to say An'amta. So, it's like Alhamdu. An'amta. That noon sakina, right? We want to hold the An and then that meme. Am. An'amta. Sirat al ladina An'amta alayhim. And notice I said alayhim and not alayhim. Alayhim. Like that. Now let's say uh, that part together three times. One, two, three. Sirat al-Ladina an'amta alayhim. Again. Sirat al-Ladina an'amta alayhim. Again. Sirat al-Ladina an'amta alayhim. All right. So uh, the next part we'll say. غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. All right. So a common mistake here is saying غير غير and making the غين too light. We don't want to say غير. It's what's غين فتح. What sound does غين فتح produce? غا. We want to do. We don't. We don't want to overdo and say غا. It's not غا. It's غا. We're going up, not over, not غا, but غا. غا. So غين فتحة يا سكون غي غي. Say that. Say غي غي غيري. So we said what ra with كسرة is light. So it's not غيريل غيريل غيريل. Say that. غيريل. غير المغضوب. Right. So it's not المغ مغضوب. 
The Mim Fatha is light. Ma. Mim Fatha Ma. Then Roin Sukun. Mel. Mel. Roiril Mel. Bubi. Roiril Mel. Bubi. غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين Amen. So the last thing is that ولا الضالين. We want to make sure the Wow is light. We want to, a lot of people will say Waludda, Walla, Walla, Wa La, Wa La, say Wa La, Wa La, Wa La, Wa Notice how I go from the light lamb to the heavy bod. Each letter, it's right. Lamb is light, bod is heavy. Keep it that way. Say Wa La, Wa La, Wa وَلَا الضَّالِ غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِينَ Notice how when I said ball, I kept it heavy, 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 and then I didn't Go li I didn't um, keep it that way. When I got to the lamb, I came down light. I said, Wa la ball. I didn't say, Wa la ballin, which a lot of people do. Wa la ballin, right? And I also put shadda. Wa la ballin, instead of Wa la ballin. غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. All right, like that. So we all. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thank you so much for your participation. Alhamdulillah. All right. So, uh, so that's that. Now we will say it together, but we'll pause on عليهم and then uh, do the second half, all right? So I'm going to say it first, repeat after me, and then we'll say it together three times. So repeat after me, after I say it. Sirat al Sorry, after. Sirat al an'amta alayhim Ghayri al-maghdubi alayhim Amen. All right, so uh, let's say it together three times, pausing at alayhim and then continuing. All right, one, two, three. Sirat al an'amta alayhim ghayri al-maghubi alayhim Again, صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. One more time. صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. All right, volunteers, and then we'll end it off with a group recitation of the whole Fatiha, insha'Allah, and then we're done. Yes. So, ay, Bismillah. What he gonna give you the mic? Sirat al صراط الذين صراط الذين All right, repeat after me. 
Almost, now just say the ta heavy instead of sirat tal ladina, say sirat tal, ta ta, tal ladina. Sirat tal ladina an amta alayhim ta. Sirat tal ladina an amta alayhim. Ghayril maghdubi alayhim waladda. Amin, that's very good. Just one more thing I want you to observe. <clears throat> Instead of saying غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ You hear the difference? Clarifying the ayn. Instead of مَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ Alright? Alhamdulillah. Good job, mashaAllah. Uh, sister side. All right, let's work on that. You said Sirat al but it's Thal. Sirat al the the Dina. Sirat al Tongue between the teeth. Say Sirat al Dina. Sirat al Sirat al Say it one more time. Surat al The Say the. Okay. The. The. Surat al That's it. An amta alayhim. Ghayr al maghdubi alayhim. Walad dalin. Ameen. Barakallahu fiki. So just definitely drill yourself on that then and try to uh, uh, eliminate the z, z sound and replace it with the. Like in that, them, those, their, they, these, and so on. Alhamdulillah. Uh, yes. Bismillah, your turn. Clarify the ayin. An'amta. Say it again. An'amta. Start over. Sirat al Sirat al Lazina Did you say Sirat al Say it again. Sirat al Lazina. Yeah, so you're saying Sirat al Lazina. Say Sirat al Lazina. The, the. Sirat al Lazina an amta alayhim. Good job. Ghayri. Ghayri al Mawdubi alayhim walad. Good job. We have here. Oh, brothers only? No sisters want to do it? Yeah? Alright, khalas. Sirat al an'amta alayhim khayr al alayhim Amin, almost, all right. So that was very good, mashallah. This is that second half. Instead of al we want to just say dad, not va. Say ghayri al maghdubi. Alayhim, go ahead. Alayhim wa Amin, all right. The last couple of things is instead of wa say wa la. Much better. MashaAllah. Good job. Yusuf. You're Yusuf, right? Okay. Alhamdulillah. All right. So we good? All right. Now let's say that together three times. One, two, three. Sirat al an'amta alayhim. غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. Again, صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. 
more time. All right, I mean, so at this point, what I normally do, unless I get like a resounding objection in all of the places that I've gone and done the workshop, I like to end by doing a group recording um, with getting all of us for our own records for Measured Tones Institute. And I like to get us all reciting together. Does anyone have any objections? No? You, you got a mask on though, bro. Like, <laughs> he's like, do your thing, partner. OK. <laughs> all right. So we good? All right. So I'm going to do the whole thing. All right. One, two, three. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين Amin. Alhamdulillah. Barakallahu feekum. Wa jazakumullahu khaira. Now, to end off, can we get at least a couple of people to say the whole surah from start to finish? And let us break it down or just show us how it's done. Bismillah. Oh, yeah, Mike. I'll give it to him. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. All right, let's make the laws a little heavier. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All right, try not to bounce the lamb and bil it, Rabbil it, like that. Rabbil Alameen. Go ahead. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Malik Yawm Al-Din. Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'een. Try not to pause after you say Iyaka. Don't say Iyaka Na'budu. Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'een. Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'een. All right, we're going to work on that. You want to work on not pausing after Iyaka, but inshallah, we're going to continue. إهدنا الصراط المستقيم، صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. All right, let's repeat. ولا الضالين بالشدة عند الام ولا الض. Thank you so much. Any sisters want to say the whole surah? I, I did have one question. I know I kind of I was busy running an errand. Um, the reason why I think I kind of got that, uh, I think it's more like uh, um, because what happened. I don't just to take up time. I know because time is short. Um, basically, a few years back, uh, I had ran into a brother in the San Diego area. And you know, he himself, personal story, he kind of had wasn't exactly a practicing Muslim, kind of very far from the actually, but subhanAllah, by the grace of Allah, like he had like somehow like learned that like, he had went to sleep some night and when they woke up and he like learned like that we like just miraculous like Allah had gifted him like that. And he, you know, even went to scholar Sheikh in his area locality and he had uh, talked to some things and mentioned some things and when it came to one specific thing here uh, which is that yeah kept now so in that sense um, 
what it is is uh, he mentioned he taught me this, and, I, and since then, for many years, I've, I've held on to it and it made sense to me. He was saying that it has nothing to do with tajweed, it just has to do with the grammar and, and meaning of what you're saying. Uh, I would go up there and I would point to it, but like, you know, it says, Iyaka, like you're saying that basically like you, like, you know, kind of like you, yeah. fairly you, mm -hmm. and then Na'budu, like Na is the us, mm -hmm. and then uh, Na'budu, Budu is the we worship, worship, so we worship, Na'budu, we worship, mm -hmm. and then Nastain, we seek help. So it's kind of like two different words. You're saying yaka, only you, and then mm -hmm. na'budu, only you, we worship, only you, we seek help. But if you say yaka na'budu, what is kana'budu, what is kanasta'in, what does this mean? This is the thing in Arabic, I mean, he went and asked this one from Yemen, this scholar of his, and they speak like, what is uh, recitation? He was like, wow, so you're saying something that's kind of like really stands out to me. You're, you're making sense. Like, what, what were you saying? Kana'budu, kanasta'in, this doesn't sound, we, we, like oh, many recite, reciters mm -hmm. say, like the kanabudu kana say, we're taught like that. So mm -hmm. the, what you were saying, iyaka nabudu, iyaka nastain. That, and, like, so he's making a more of a clear distinction, right? Yeah. Um, so I know it's common. The kind only of, yeah, the only thing is, is that the word is not kanabudu and kanastain. Yeah, it's not, it's, yeah. You're saying the whole word iyaka nabudu. So. There is a distinction. This is, the distinction is already clear for anyone who, like for people who would know the Arabic, mm -hmm. it's already a clear distinction, right? Mm -hmm. It's we can hear iyaka and also naabudu. Mm -hmm. So a person shouldn't say kanabudu or kanastain yes, as a standalone. Mm -hmm. But in the full ayah, iyaka naabudu wa iyaka nastain, there's no discrepancy there. There's no issue there. Um, mm -hmm. And also, as you know, as I stated before, um, this is how it was narrated on right, the Prophet so long, yeah, yeah, like, had, like, yeah. years ago, it's a big, yeah. Wouldn't have been like that. Yeah. yeah. So there's no, no. I've never heard it um, recited in that way to do that very hard pause mm -hmm. afterwards. It doesn't change the meaning. Granted. Yeah. I think it how, makes it more clear. It, it, it yeah. makes it more clear. But again, remember the, the example of Abdullah bin Mas'ud mm -hmm. when he stopped the man for uh, yeah, not stretching. Not it wasn't, it's just not how the, that was, that's all he needed, right? Mm -hmm. All he, all his thing was, it don't change the meaning, but that's not how the prophet did it. And that was all they were concerned with. And so that's basically what the case would be in this particular situation. Wallahu alam at the end of the day. Allah knows best, right? Thank you for sharing. Alhamdulillah. Amin wants to do it. Oh, you want to do it? And we said no sisters want to do the whole surah? Y'all scared? Y'all scared? <laughs> <laughs> you understand? All right, bismillah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Alright, so that Alhamdu, instead of Alhamdu, you want to say Alhamdu Ha, Ha, say Ha Alhamdulillahi yes, Rabbil Alameen Allah. Oh, relax, relax. Go ahead, take a breath. Take a breath real quick. Just take a breath. Deep breath. One, two, three. Take a deep breath. Again, come on, deep breath. One more deep breath. All right. Now say, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. Excellent. Next. Malik Excellent. Next. Alright, let's step back. Let's go one uh, back one. Let's say Iyaka Nabudu wa Iyaka Nastain. Go ahead. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in Now before we continue, are you okay with finishing? Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Now let's pull. Ihdina sirat al-mustaqin Now let's say al-sad instead of ihdina si, let's say ihdina si Ihdina sirat al-mustaqin Excellent. Sirata. 
It's repeated, but instead of Sirat al Lazina, let's say Sirat al Lazina. Sirat al Lazina, go ahead. Sirat al Lazina an Amta Alayhim. Excellent. Ameen, Takbir. Takbir. Alhamdulillah. No, good job, good job. Excellent, excellent, mashallah. All right, I love it. There's actually nothing wrong with crying when you're reciting Quran. You know, it's actually recommended. You know, the Prophet ﷺ told us, you know, when you're reciting Quran, he actually said, fake it till you make it. That was real. But he told us, like, fake it till you make it. If you can't really cry when you're reciting Quran, you know, fake it until it becomes a real thing. <laughs> no, I said, he wasn't faking. He, that's the real deal. So, alhamdulillah. I, I wish I'd cry when I, you know, recite more, you know. Actually, I just had a quick question. Yeah. Um, so, I know we practice pausing after Sirat al Ladina and Amta Alihim. In recitation, like in prayer, is it okay to pause there? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, the, you know, you have the two opinions about the Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. So, one opinion says it is a part of the surah, the other opinion that it is not. For the ones who say that it's not a part of the surah, uh, uh, then they actually put an ayah break uh, there anyway. Right, so the Hanafi school and the Maliki schools, they put the ayah break there anyway. So it's 100% so, so I, I had a question like, uh, most of the time, like the people who don't speak Arabic, we learn Arabic, the Fus Arabic. So we learn the Tajweed, but then we don't know where to take breath. Like for example, yeah, that's a good, good so question. is there in Tajweed there is certain things where you basically say that at the end of this ayah you take you take the breath or. Yeah, so it does help when you know Arabic, it does help. However, you can also just learn. Whenever you're learning a particular surah, and let's say an ayah is a little too long for you, just ask your teacher, inshallah, just be like, you know, all right, is it too long for me? Where is it okay for me to stop? And where is it not okay to stop? And so on. And they can just teach you where to stop and how to continue and so on and so forth. But this is actually part of knowledge of tajweed, is knowing where to start and where you can't start, and where to stop, and where you can't stop. This is part of the study of Tajweed. So, yeah, the, the easiest and quickest way is, you're learning a surah, ask your teacher. But then you could learn Arabic, and then you don't need to do anything. <laughs> That's the hard way. <laughs> All right, any other questions? We've, we're pretty much finished. Any other questions uh, about anything that I've said, or anything you've been thinking, or anything? We're good, yes? Yeah, that, that's what that brochure is. Yeah, okay. yep, the brochure says everything. Um, it, you know, it's pretty much the majority of the information is there. At this present moment, um, our website was actually like hacked like, like yesterday or something. And my developer told me he was going to look into it today, inshallah. Um, so I haven't actually had the time to follow up and check if, if he actually did anything or if he messaged me. I can't remember. I didn't see anything. I've been running around. So, um, but the social media, all the social media is up there. If you look on the back of the brochure, there is a QR code on the far right over here that says join our mailing list. Inshallah, we're going to be having some more um, programs that we'll be adding, inshallah. Um, I'm going to be developing some more workshops, more comprehensive than the Fatiha. Like we're um, working on developing a weekend long. I'm, def I'm deciding between weekend long and possibly even week long uh, intensive Tajweed um, uh, workshop in which we will learn all of the rules of Tajweed. Like all of the rules, not just Fatiha, but all of the rules of Tajweed so we can take that and apply it to our recitation in general. Uh, and then we're also working on some international trips as well. I'm, gonna, I'm putting together some tours right now, inshallah, uh, and I want to uh, explore the, 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 the countries that have rich and or unique histories with the Qur'an and I want to take people and go on that journey with people inshallah to um, just kind of you know see the Qur'an through a different lens through like a historic lens and uh, and and so on and so forth and so we're going to be doing that inshallah I'm actually going to Turkey this November 
uh, with Lynn Turner, right? <laughs> but um, I'm going not just to be with them, but I'm going to scope out some things and put together a whole entire um, Quran tour, inshallah, so that we can go and learn about, you know, uh, the history of the Quran in Turkey under the Ottomans and like that whole type of thing, uh, because it's super, 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 super interesting. And so these are some of the things if you want to just kind of stay in touch with any of these things, just scan that uh, QR code, it'll add you to our mailing list, and those reminders will be going out, inshallah. Okay? okay. All right. Thank you, Brother Munir, for taking the lead on this. Of course. So we have 113 chapters to go, inshallah. Right. All right. Exactly. Motivation, huh? Yeah, 113 more weekends, inshallah.